The Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association and your local cable provider presents Cable Reports. Join us now as Cable Reports brings you up to date on current issues facing the Commonwealth through discussions with your local legislators and other policymakers from across Virginia. Welcome from the General Assembly in the City of Richmond. I'm Woody Evans for Cable Reports and Comcast. And a very warm welcome to Delegate Riley Ingram representing uh, Chesterfield County among other areas in his district. Uh, also a member of the Appropriations Committee and we can rest assured that the Commonwealth's uh, budget will be balanced once more. But I uh, wanted you to talk a little bit about uh, economic activities in, in Chesterfield. Chesterfield is very fortunate in so much that they have, you know, Amazon coming in, 400, 500 jobs. Um, it, it, it has created a little bit of a traffic problem in that area, mm -hmm. but uh, Chesterfield is in the process now of widening Route 10 even more. It's, um, Chesterfield is very, very well ran uh, county. They do a good job. But they're like everywhere else right now, Woody. The real estate values, that's a lot of their tax base. And the real estate values are, are down. As you know, I'm in the real estate business and uh, have an office right there in Chester, right there on Route 10. And we are selling houses for anywhere from 10, 20, 30 percent in some cases below the tax assessment. That much. And, and that much. And, uh, but it, it's... And we're seeing somewhat of pickup, and prices mm -hmm. are stabilizing some, so that part is good. But the, but Chesterfield County and all localities now are going through this, and by, what I mean by that is is they're going to have to have, they're going to have to make cuts in places mm -hmm. and raise revenue in other places, or increase the real estate tax rate, which they don't want to do, and I understand that, but the values um, have decreased some over the last. Four, three, four, five years, really, and um, and, I, and I don't see that changing to a great extent. I think it, it'll level out, but it's um, but Chesterfield is very fortunate that they have the economic base that they have and the jobs and and um, all that in place. And it's great that that Amazon located there, it, but also understand that Amazon agreed to basically a level playing field yes. with bricks and mortar. Uh, businesses because they they have agreed to to pay uh, tax on the internet sales. Yes, I think so, and I think it starts this year. I think that uh, I think that's correct, and then that and that'll be good for the Commonwealth as well as Chesterfield County also. Great, great. Yeah, uh, I, I know you're you're always looking for ways to do away with fraud and, and abuse uh, uh, anywhere uh, that that state government provides services to. Uh, it's it's residents, and you have a bill dealing with uh, temporary assistance for needy families. needy families. Tell us about that. Yes, Woody. What happened was is, is back in uh, it was a, I think it was the last week of July, or the first week of August. Uh, it was 9:30 in the morning. I'm at my office, and the telephone rings, and and uh, this gentleman on the other end, he was from down in Prince George County, and and he said, uh, Riley, this lady just got fired. Uh, from her job, from her employer, because she failed to sell cigarettes and beer to uh, to a lady on uh, on he said tariff uh, tariff funds, but it was I said no, I said it's the temporary assistance needy families. I said he said that's it, that's it. I said it's tariff funds, and I said I said but I think there's restrictions on it. He said. Well, Fox News just said it wasn't any restrictions to it and that uh, they could do anything they wanted to do with this money. Well, I started doing a little bit of checking. Within about three days, I found out that there were no restrictions on them. But Virginia is not unique. There was mm -hmm. a big article mm -hmm. in the uh, New York Post up in New York, and it's the same thing that's that's going on up there. They've 
uh, found out that they've been uh, swiping this card um, mm-hmm. a- everywhere from uh, buying beer and ABC stores here in Virginia mm-hmm. to um, um, off track betting, maybe those kind everything. of everything. Off track bet lottery, lottery uh, tickets were being sold, and everything from these uh, these cards. And the way it works is it goes on a debit card, which mm-hmm. is the money goes onto the card. The card is yours, and you can use it anywhere you want to, and you get cash for the card or whatever. So. Now, how much abuse is there? I, at first, I did not think it was much. I really didn't. I said, it's, it, you know, it's, it's not a lot. We'll just uh, take care of it and everything be okay. Mm-hmm. But it is a lot of abuse in the system. And I think that, that all of us as taxpayers and citizens need to make sure that our taxes are going where they should go. It is our job as legislative body to look after the people that cannot look after themselves. But we do not want someone who's supposed to be buying baby diapers right. going out and, and uh, using that ABC store to buy a, a fifth of bourbon or scotch or whatever they want to drink. But, but now the bill, um, we found out that to implement this, well, according to social services, they're saying that to implement this plan, it would be in the neighborhood of three million dollars. Three million dollars. Three million dollars. And Woody, I just I'm checking on this now. I've got uh, Susan Mazard up in appropriations. She's checking on it and uh, to see what can be done, because even the president signed mm-hmm. into law. We must. We must. Every state in the union must. Uh, put restrictions on this by 2014, and if they don't do it, Woody, by 2014, we're going to lose millions of dollars in you know through the welfare system and through the TANF funds. So we have to do something right now. I feel sure the bill will pass. Now, how we're going to enforce it, I don't know yet because that's still in the air because that would have to be funded um, through the budget process. And that's a pretty significant cost. But yeah. I understand that the uh, the uh, SNAP program, which uh, provides food stamps, already has that requirement. Yes, it does. And, the, and the, the, um, that's a what, supplemental nutritional, uh, in other words, a SNAP program, supplemental nutritious assistance. Yes. That's, that's what it is. And that is, um, that has restrictions on it. And so I don't, I, I, it's definitely, I'm a common sense man, but I un, understand that if it can be done there, it can be done with this. There's an association of businesses that issues these cards, and I think uh, they're certainly aware of it. The problem with making it, uh, uh, enforcing it at, at, at the retail level is I understand a lot of these cards look just like MasterCards, for they example. They do. That is, it's identical. It's a debit card, and they can use it anywhere. And that's where I think that we can uh, limit this to the, and, and, and not hurt anyone by doing that. Um, it, it's, it's, it's something that we definitely need to do, and I think that uh, we will be successful. It's just a question of how soon we can implement it. But at least, Woody, it'll be in the law, and so someone would not get fired because of it. Right. And, of course, you mentioned the buying of diapers, and you want to make sure that the children are taken care of. I right. think I think the monthly allotment may be $250. Well, it all depends on the size of the family. Right, but right. The average is it, anywhere amount. from 2 to 3 it's from 200 to 300. Right. Somebody. You want to make sure that the rent is paid, right. utilities, and those baby right. diapers are, That's are, right. are taken care That's of. That's right. And if, and if they need a uh, if they need a high chair or mm-hmm. a baby mattress or something like that, yes, they should be able to go buy that. You know, if there's something that they need to uh, supplement their rental payment to pay their rent, right. I think they should be able to do that. All these things. I just think that as far as uh, tattooing mm-hmm. and and um, Alcohol Porno shops, right? In other words, and and especially the um, what the bill says is where they disrobe or partially disrobe right, right. because they've shown up. Uh, you know, we have you know 
we don't want them to get, be getting lap dances with right. my tax dollars. And this is consistent with what the federal government's going to require that's by exactly 2014 right. anyway. Yes. That's right. Yeah. Now, as, as long as you and I have known each other, you, you've also had, had a bill to require identification <laughs> when a person cashes a check. Really? Tell us why that's necessary. I don't know. For four years, and I have the same bill again this year, and I'll explain it to the people, and I think that they will understand. If you go and cash a check at the bank or anywhere else, they require ID, and they will not mm -hmm. cash the check unless you put a thumbprint or ID, some, uh, well, identification plus a thumbprint most, in mo most cases. All my bill is is for strictly check cashers. Mm -hmm. It is so narrowly drawn that it's strictly for the people that charge a fee for cashing a check. And the people that are in business, in fact, I have a photo that I'm going to show before the committee, but I have before, and it says, checks cash, no ID required, right on the, on the sign in mm -hmm. front, of, front of the place. And the reason for this is because they get 5%. In most cases, they get 5%. So anyone that's here that's illegal or undocumented or what have you, and they're working, and they do work. There's no question about it. I don't know in a lot of cases what we would do without some of the workers. However, they get paid. They get an $800 check. Well, they are here, um, and they're not here legally, okay? So... They take that $800 check, Woody, and they go to the check cashing place and they cash that check. That's making 5%. Cost $40 for that person to cash that check. So instead of $800 that they get, they get $760. Mm -hmm. The check cashing place gets $40. And what happens is it goes right in that machine and sucks the money right out right then. And that's, that's the way it is. Now... The th that, that concerns me, but the thing that concerns me and bothers me even more is grandmother that's at home. Mm -hmm. Little Johnny comes in with Joe, okay? And uh, Joe keeps grandmother right. uh, occupied. Little Johnny, the grandson, goes back into the bedroom, pulls the last check out of the mm -hmm. checkbook, mm -hmm. writes himself a check, not himself, writes to whoever. It could be anyone that, you know, Joe Smith or John Smith or whatever. And he signs his grandmother's name to it, takes down the check cashing place, gets his friend to cash the check. He cashes the check for $200, okay? Mm -hmm. They put the money in their pocket. The check cashing place gets $10 for cashing the check. There's no record of it, no ID required. Mm -hmm. Now, Grandmother doesn't know anything about that, Woody, right. until a month later when she gets her bank statement. When she gets her bank statement, she sees $200 is gone. Well, when she finds out that this has happened, she probably knows that little Johnny right. took it. Right. But she's embarrassed over this, so she's sure. not going to do anything about it, okay? Just in November of this year, just two months ago, this lady... Um, the gentleman came up to the house mm -hmm. and he he told her he was going to clean her gutters out and walk in. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. he may have had a car or truck or something down the street, right. but anyway, and told her that he was going vinyl siding her uh, shop out back but and clean her gutters and all and clean her yard, but he needed a $200 advance. Mm -hmm. So, of course, she writes him the $200 check, Woody, and then... So she's telling her son about two hours later that she has got somebody that's going to clean her gutters out and clean her yard up and put siding on the shop and said he wanted an advance, and so I gave him $200. And he said, oh, no, mother, you did not do that. And she said, yes. He said, well, stop payment on the check. Well, mm -hmm. she calls up and tries to stop payment on the check. The check had already cleared the bank sure. because they went to a check cashing place and just like you go to Macy's or anywhere else, and they, they put that check in that machine, it takes it out right away, and they give you the check back, they tear the check up, and it's gone. But I really and truly think that I've, I have it narrowed down now to where it's only a $200 fine, mm -hmm. but I, I honestly think that this is something that should be there to protect the people. So what's the status of, of that piece of legislation? Right now, the status of the legislation is is, is um, 
it was three of us total that I did not know at the time, but it was uh, Delegate Wilt and Delegate um, Scott Garrett, the mm -hmm. doctor from right. Lynchburg, and right. myself. And so, Woody, I've been there 21 years. This is my 22nd January. So, you know, I don't need credit for anything. Right, exactly. So what, I, what we did was is we rolled it all into Delegate Wilt's bill, for him to carry, I see. and now my bill is a, is on top, it is under his okay. bill, okay? And his did include uh, tattooing, which mine did not include, mm -hmm. so his is a little bit broader, so we put it in there. So what I'm doing now, it will be coming before the committee. I feel without the, put, see, we couldn't put the clause for the, um, in there about uh, enforcement because I of the see. cost, okay? So now I feel sure it'll be on the books, and now in the meantime we'll be working on how we're going to right. uh, enforce it. Right, right, yeah. great. Well, good luck on both of those. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the governor had a very bold proposal in his State of the Commonwealth address on a number of items, and of course transportation is Tran probably the biggest one. Transportation, Woody's a big one, and I, I have been contacting the people that I represent. Mm -hmm. You know, my district is part of Prince George County, part of City of Hopewell, part of Henrico, and a big portion, like 60% of more of Chesterfield, Chesterfield County. And the people that I've contacted so far, um, six or seven out of 10, they do not like taking the 17 and a half cents off of the um, yes, gasoline right. tax because that they, that is a user fee and I do agree with that. Um, there are times that you need to raise revenue. Mm -hmm. And Woody, I'm, I try to be a, a common sense person. And so coming from local government, from the city of Hopewell there, there are times that you need to raise revenue. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that fees are taxes, same thing. So I do not sure. sign a no-tax pledge. And the reason I don't sign a no-tax pledge is because of the fact that I think a fee is a tax. Another thing they don't like about that, and I'll tell you about this, is the fifteen dollar registration. registration fee. Yes. And I'll tell you a funny story. This now was, that's in addition to what the yes, registration that's fee an is now. Yes, that's an addition to what's okay. on there now. That's a fifteen dollar increase. See, and a lot of people don't like that. Um, and the the sales tax increase by point mm -hmm. eight, you know, percent. It's almost one percent, which is going to cost everybody a lot but I, I, I before I go any further I want to say that I commend the governor on sure. putting a proposal forward because we definitely need a uh, sustaining and you know money mm -hmm. for transportation now having said that on the registration fee I, uh, Woody I have old 92 Ford pickup truck and so about three years ago to you know I had to check in my pocket and so I went down and I hadn't paid any attention to it and the Commissioner of Revenue there in Hopewell is a DMV person, and so you mm -hmm. don't have to pay any extra to go there uh, in, you know, in person. And she, so I looked at it, and I said, what is this $5 increase? And she looked at me, and she said, Riley, you voted for it. And I said, I voted for it? I couldn't believe it, but I did. <laughs> and, and to me, that, that was, a, a, you know, same as a tax increase, a fee increase. It is a user fee, but I feel the same way about gasoline. At least the out-of-state people that come through the state of Virginia will be paying some of that when they fill up with gas. Right. And, and, when, and just like tolls, I don't have a problem with tolls as long as they are uh, in a place where the traffic is. For example, northern Virginia, that's where they have a big problem. Uh, down Hampton Roads area on 64, a uh, lot of out-of-state cars. And when you leave Virginia, Woody, you pay and pay and pay. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife, when she was living, she used to love to go to Atlantic City and play those slot machines. Right, right. And, and it's $19 and something if you go, as soon as you get in New Jersey, turn off, I think it's on Route 40 or something, and go that way across right. country. But if you go straight up New Jersey Turnpike and go the other way, it's like 23 or $24 right. round trip. Right. So we pay and pay and pay when we go out of state, but to come through Virginia, don't pay anything. But I do, I do not... Uh, I do, I do not want to see tolls on uh, 95 mm -hmm. between Petersburg and Emporia down there. If they're going to do that, I'd like to see it at the state line. 
Now, the, uh, the Commonwealth would be the first state uh, ever to eliminate the gas tax if the governor's proposal is, yes. is, is made uh, law. Um, what's, your, what, what's your take on whether that will... Well, I see a decrease see, this by is, per gallon cost. This is what people are telling me, and if you think about it, Woody, um, you know, the people I represent are a lot smarter than I am in a lot of ways, and they give me a lot of good ideas. And they're telling me, they said, Riley, if you think that we, we as a consumer, mm -hmm. is going to get the benefit of that 17 and a half cents, and we're going to see 17 and a half cents reduction in the price of gasoline, said, you know, I have some land in the oceanfront in Nevada, I'll sell you. And, you know, when you think about it, they're probably right, because we may see five cents of it or something, but I don't think we're going to see that 17 and a half cent. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, you know, it's a, uh, gasoline is, is a, a commodity just like corn, wheat, soybeans, or anything else, right. and it fluctuates up and down. But I think that people are used to the uh, 17 and a half. And like I said before, at, at, you know, that is one thing that we get from the people coming through Virginia. Now, we're being told in some cases that, that people coming through would pay more in sales tax, but right. for the most part, if they're coming through Virginia, they're going to pay sales tax now on food or whatever they mm -hmm. eat. But for the most part, they're going to stop and get maybe a, a Pepsi or a Coke or something, right. and, a, and a, you know, a sandwich, and then they're going to be on their way. So I, I, I don't see that, but I don't want to. I just, I just want to commend the governor on putting forward a proposal. And I think everyone knows that this is not the final thing. It'll, it'll go through the House. It'll go to the Senate. There'll be another version. It'll be a compromise. And hopefully uh, we'll be able to get come out of here with something everybody can live with. Yes, because some people suggest that it's not a great idea to rely on the federal government to act on a law that would generate additional revenues by way of Internet uh, uh, retail sales. Uh, and that's part of the proposal as well. No question, and and would it, that that reminds me of the Medicaid expansion yes, program. Yes, yes. What people are afraid of, and I understand, the federal government spending a dollar, borrowing forty some cents of every dollar they spend, and there's no way that you or myself or anyone can run a household that way mm -hmm. because sooner or later you're going to be bankrupt. So, what what we are concerned about in the General Assembly mm -hmm. is. Who is going to pay the bill? In other words, mm -hmm. if we implement this, we are going to have to put safeguards in there to make sure that if the federal government does not live up to their end of the bargain, mm -hmm. that we're going to be out of the program. But it's, it's like giving a, a child a piece of candy. If you don't give that child that candy in the first place, you don't have a major problem. But if you give that child that candy, and then you try to take that candy back, the child's going to have a fit. And that's the same thing we have now. And what we're really, so many of us are concerned about is the, the federal government being able to live up to their end of the bargain. And what, uh, you know, uh, I think that um, they've either got to increase revenue or cut spending mm -hmm. or a combination thereof. Mm -hmm. And what, what, what I'm afraid that they're going to do is in another year or two years, they're going to uh, give us a pot of money and it's going to include everything from uh, Section 8 housing to Medicare, Medicaid, the whole thing. And here's this pot of billions of dollars. And it's up to you to do all these programs that they mandate on us. And I think it's going to be difficult. I think it's going to be very difficult for us to do if that happens. And uh, it's just going to throw a burden on, the, on all the states and instead of the federal government. But because, wouldn't surprise because right now, as I understand it, the federal government has basically said they will pay for the first three years 100% right. for the expansion. Thereafter, it will continue to, to go down. There is a bill, I think, I forget who's introduced it, basically says, okay, we'll do it for three years and see what happens in well, terms of the expansion. Yes, that, that, that's one proposal. Another proposal is, is that um, possibly putting it like, for the three years, the right. first thing, and then have a reenactment clause I after see. five years that it would be reenacted depending on what the mm -hmm. federal government does. Because
after, I don't know exactly the years, but I think it's after, after the fifth or sixth or seventh year, then it starts, it begins to right. cost the state money. Right. Uh, you must feel powerless sometimes. We keep talking about the, the federal government, and of course this whole issue of sequestration is still pending there, which would have a really significant impact on the economy of the Commonwealth, given the number of federal employees and especially the military installations. Yes, yes. And I know the governor has a contingency fund, but it pales in comparison to the economic devastation that might occur. Woody, you hit the nail on the head. We're really concerned about what is going to happen with that because Virginia, um, a lot of our money is based on the government spending uh, through the military, especially in Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. And so we cannot, um, gosh, if we lost that, we'd lose a lot. We would have to go back to the drawing board to see what we can do. Now, the governor does have uh, money there, and he's, he's, you know, reserved some there in a contingency fund. But if they do that, depending on how much they do, it would, would hurt the sure, state. Sure. Really would. I think he also wants to double the amount of the rainy day fund, which is about $350 million at this yes, point. Yes, and, and that's another proposal. And... And what we're doing in appropriations um, is we're trying to bring a lot of things, if we have money left over, mm -hmm. put it in to the, down to the bottom line so that we can put that little nest egg back there for emergency. Sure. And then if, if we don't have an emergency, then of course we could use the money later. But for now, we really need to look at what we're going to spend and how we're going to spend it. Right. The, the governor also announced this the year of the teacher. He's been uh, very aggressive yes. on education. Uh, talk to us about how that impacts your local school districts. and Woody, the All of the school districts, uh, what the governor's proposal is for a 2 percent increase. It does not mandate this onto the localities. It is up to the localities whether they give the teachers an increase in pay or not. What this does, what the governor has said, though, is the state will pay their part of the 2% increase in pay for the school teachers. Our school system uh, in, in Virginia is, we have a great school system, but we, have, we still have people that are falling through the cracks that we need to, uh, need to do something for. We also, have, we also have failing schools that we need to really mm -hmm. take a hard look at because everybody... He deserves a good education and a good footing and foundation to, for the outlook of life. And the governor has also proposed uh, increasing the number of charter schools in, in the state as well. Yes. And, and, and you, you know, I understand that. And, and if, uh, you know, the, the other side of that is they're saying it's taking money from public schools. Mm -hmm. Charter school is a public mm -hmm. school. It is a public school. But that's, that's another issue that's um, give and take all the way around, and we just have to see what happens. Great. Well, uh, thank you for being here. We appreciate your public service. Keep up the good work, work on all you. those bills, and especially thank in the you, Appropriations Woody. Committee. Thank you, Woody. Good thank to you. see you, Delegate Riley Ingram. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching Cable Reports, brought to you by the Virginia Cable Telecommunications Association and Comcast. Until next time, I'm Woody Evans.